All right, guys. So um, this is actually just a section in my book that I want to talk about. And it's my book ended up being uh, a little bit more about the mindset of fitness than it is about fitness. And there is a, pro a conditioning program in the book. Um, this, the second draft is almost done here um, because I wrote the first draft covering every topic. And then I went back in, which was uh, the cause of the delay because I went back in and I just started expanding on everything. And uh, initially, it was supposed to be a small book, like 60 pages or something like that. Uh, right now, it's moving into, it's probably going to be like about 150 pages. So uh, uh, it, it more than doubled in the size that I expected it to be. And uh, and yeah, so uh, I just want to talk about the one section in the book, um, again, it, about the mindset of fitness. Uh, and really, it's mindset in general. Um, but I find that uh, in my own um, case, you know, a lot of the mindset stuff actually transfers uh, from life into fitness and vice versa from fitness into uh, if you can see the correlation, you know, then you, you'll notice that it works in in uh, improving your goals towards any goal, whether it's uh, uh, towards life, towards relationships, towards fitness or whatever. But I try to... Re um, Relate it to fitness as best as possible. So, anyways, there's one section uh, where I talk about the mindset uh, that you're required to actually obtain a uh, fitness goal, and one of them actually uh, comes down to um, hum humility. And that's the first uh, one of the first, you know, mindset things that I talk about in terms of uh, getting your goal. Okay, so humility is an interesting topic you know a lot of times people think of uh, humility as um, being smaller than or not speaking speaking up about you know a, um, an ideal and you know just standing down and being small you know but to me um, the the term humility does not mean that right it doesn't mean okay somebody else has a has a bigger voice so I'm just gonna kind of cower and not and not speak up or whatever so but Humility is actually, uh, to me, it, humility is like, um, it's not cowering down, but it's being confident in what you do know, but not knowing that what you do know is not the pinnacle of the information that, uh, you know, you could be. It's knowing that your capability of where you are now, like what you're capable of, and knowing that you're capable of amazing things. But at the same time, knowing that you're not there yet, right? So it's not belittling yourself. It's not being smaller than you are. Um, it's more like uh, taking out uh, oh, how special you are out of the equation, right? So just because your information or what you know is, is, um, is good and be confident in the information you know, right? Everybody starts where they are. You start where you are. Right, so that's an important thing to have is to be confident in your information, right? Be confident and have a have a position in uh, in what you know, but also know that two things: one, you could be wrong, and two, uh, it could be improved. So even if it is right, there always always space and uh, you know a position for growth. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give a give an example, and this example is actually in the book. Okay, so when I first started fitness. Okay, I started with what I knew. So I was the, uh, you know, I did Taekwondo. So really, uh, when I when I when I, I came down to doing fitness, I ended up just doing what I know. So I did a lot of cardio. I started doing Taekwondo drills, and uh, you know, like it it started uh, giving me the physique I want. Like I started going really, really heavy on uh, Taekwondo, and eventually I started lifting, right? And again, and I started putting on muscle mass. And I was like, wow, this is, this is impressive. And then I decided, hey, you know, I'm going to go and uh, do fitness. Well, I was suggested um, actually by my sister. She's like, you know, uh, you know, like my physique was coming in. First time in my life I've had this like uh, six pack. And she's like, why don't you just compete in, uh, you know, a fitness show or whatever. Right? And back then, fitness shows like now everyone's a fitness model. Right. But back then, you know, it was it was rare. Right. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do this. So I started uh, lifting weights and I started getting results. I started looking up, you know, mainstream diets and, you know, what clean eating is according to the mainstream. And things were working out really good, 
you know like I was I was getting the physique I wanted and it was coming in really fast right and at that point man you know uh, I, I thought man I have this doubt and I, I know I know I know how this works I know you know I know everything about the right nutrition because this this one method worked for me right and uh, yeah so that's it you know you just lift hard and lift heavy you know um, and I knew a little bit more about uh, methods of lifting and I knew a little bit more about methods of, of consumption and then I started learning about supplements and I started taking supplements and I'm like okay yeah this is this is it and this is early on this is early on this is probably like like eight nine years ago and anyways after uh, after that uh, later later on I ended up going to then this was only maybe uh, about two three years ago I went to a place called seal fit and for for that whole duration up to that point where I went to seal fit you know I was following a lot of the same method I expanded a little bit more but um, but I was using like bodybuilding methods of uh, fueling which is which is fine and I still use it today uh, depending on uh, you know the goals that I want to attain right so but it's obviously clearly modified and there's things that I do now that I would never have done then just because I, I knew that uh, you know back then I knew body the what, what I had the information I had was it you know it was the pinnacle and I and there's nothing that would change it you know like if you don't eat you're gonna lose muscle mass whatever right uh, stuff like that right and uh, you know now I fast and when I was doing bodybuilding, you know, I'd cut out the fats, you know, stuff like that. So, but I would never, I'd, I'd never add fats. I never would have done it. I never would have fasted. I never would have done it, you know, because because my information was right, and that didn't just didn't stand with with uh, with what I currently knew, right? And what I knew gave me results. So why would I do anything else, right? And what's interesting is I went I went to a seal fit where it was very performance based. And it's not to say that I did horribly bad, but uh, even with you know, I, I periodized my training before I went. Right, uh, my my I, I know my uh, my output went up. It was a lot better. But when I went to seal fit, um, my legs were cramping up. You know, I wasn't keeping up, and I was I got upset. I brought all these supplements, uh, you know, to to seal fit, and um, and it wasn't working for me. Right, so um, I ended up just you know putting away all the supplements when I was there uh, you know the coaches said just told me uh, pretty much okay this is uh, the pretty much the protocol that we follow for eating here and at that time it was it was uh, mostly paleo and uh, and uh, yeah so I started eating and they said you know eat eat and till you're full and then eat some more based on this standard of eating so I followed the eating plan and then my body began to perform differently better and then I realized wow what a difference you know having the right method of eating actually does for you so anyways after I completed uh, you know um, at seal fit I completed uh, the immersion course and then I did Kokoro which was uh, very uh, challenging but anyways I'm not talking about that but anyways I got when I got when I got back home I expanded on paleo I uh, did all the research I, I did before that I was doing you know low GI or I was using carbohydrates you know fast carbohydrates to pack on muscle spiking insulin to, to create muscle growth stuff like that um, I still use some of these strategies um, accordingly but uh, complete my methods completely changed right so I started looking at high performance as opposed to just uh, increasing muscle mass and so on and then I started looking into uh, paleo which led to the ketogenic which was a high um, you know a high fat diet I never would have did that right and then uh, to produce more ketones uh, I was looking at intermittent fasting and uh, because the the body actually performs very well uh, using ketones so I started fasting and something I never would have done um, with my you know with my ego saying that I know everything you know I never would have done it and then uh, and then my body started performing even more Right, so I had more uh, mental clarity. Um, I would fast. I would run to work, uh, run back, and I would do crazy things running to work. I'd carry sandbags running to work. I'd put on a weighted vest and run to work, and I also had to run back. So that was like 11 kilometers a day that I'd be doing, uh, carrying, like I said, crazy things in snow, deep snow, um, you know, 
and I was I was actually performing at a high performing rate. But again, it took a long time. And again, like I said, uh, you know, eight nine years ago, I started I started doing this bodybuilding thing, and then it, it was only like two three years ago that I actually changed. Uh, you know, said maybe there's more to this. And until this day, I'm still continuing to search because I've been taught that lesson that you know you never know enough. So, um, so even what I know now, I'm always continuing to expand and saying you know like it's really taught me to be humble about what I know because there's something out there that is even better. So I'm always trying to grow and expand what I know, right? So that was just kind of my story, and I do go through that story, you know, about about you know how not being humble had really stalled my progress right and again um i'm confident in what i know and in what i've learned so what i've known what i know so far in terms of fasting and paleo and keto and even bodybuilding methods of eating and you know like uh you know bodybuilding methods would be like carb cycling you know if it fits your macros if you want to do it that way or you know like there's there's tons of ways that bodybuilders do it and i and i've experimented with a whole bunch of methods that you know uh, bodybuilders would use and you know um you know carb tapering uh uh, car back loading all that stuff okay so anyways a lot of that's bodybuilding st- styles right so there's a lot of methods and i learned a lot and i'm confident in those methods i'm confident in paleo keto and fasting but i know there's a whole lot more to expand on that right and again like i said humility is not um to belittle yourself you know because uh, a lot of times when we're talking about humility you know uh humility humility is not humiliation right um it's it's not like uh you know because once you go into what people think humility is then you start going into victimhood right and we're not you know humility is a a very powerful tool it's not something that should be working against you it's the elimination of you know um putting yourself on a pinnacle but it's not uh, you know making small what you know right it's not oh, okay you know don't don't display what you know you know oh this, you know look at this guy he's got a big ego right no you're being confident with what you know and you're sharing what you know you're putting what you know out there you know if people think that's egotistical uh it's not you're you're confident in what you know but you're still expanding and you know that what you know is not the pinnacle so you need that mindset in order to go further uh, in your ability to learn, right? If you don't have that, um, you know, on both ends, right? If you're, if you want to be humble in the sense where, you know, you want to belittle yourself, you know, you, you little your self worth, you're not going to be able to learn because you're never going to feel like you're you're good enough, right? And if you're on the other end of the spectrum where, oh man, I know everything, then you're not going to learn either, right? So you need to have that state where I'm confident with what I know, and I need to. You know, I'm I'm gonna be able to expand what I know. What I know is not the pinnacle of what I know, right? So, um, so yeah, so that's that's one of the the main things. I'm just gonna go quickly slide through here. Um, yeah. So, anyway, so after that, it goes into um, how you know having that ego can set you up into traps where you can't learn. But, anyways. Um, yeah, so I'm not gonna talk about that. 13 minutes in, so yeah, so humility is uh, is an important thing, and it's again, it's not um, thinking less of yourself. It's taking yourself out of the picture, you know, about how special you are, right? Actually, is one thing that I always uh, uh, you know say to the people in the class is you know even our even our suffering, we we tend to make it special. Our victimhood mentality, we we tend to make it special. You know, but people that have the same problems and issues, um, you know, are striving forward um, and and pushing forward. You know, are are we any more special than those people? You know, like um, so. You know, like we need to learn to um, to not victimhood ourselves by um, you know through uh, one end of the spectrum of humil- humility. You know, um, belittling ourselves uh, and making ourselves feel less. So that uh, you know, others can feel better, <laughs> you know. But at the end, uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, you know, that we're not so special that uh, that we've already made it to the top because there's always a level higher, right? So, anyways, uh, I guess that's it for for now. 
Um, it's okay. So how does this? Oh well, I guess I was gonna say for how does this relate to fitness? But I guess my story kind of says how it relates to fitness, right? So again, um, you know, a lot of times, uh, if I can more deeply relate it to fitness, a lot of times, you know, people are repeating the same methods, and I've and I've ran into people, you know, that told me. Um, I asked them, so you know, they hit, hit a plateau, and 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 I asked them, so what are you doing for a program? And for years and years, they've been doing three sets of ten, and um, and you know, that's what they know. Uh, and and that's the pinnacle. They they don't se- search for more information. They don't expand on what they know, and uh, you know maybe they got great results from that in the beginning, and you know it's that it's um, not not stopping to say hey maybe there's something else out there, right? So uh, you know or they'll you'll be see people that are years and years running a, running running on a treadmill, right? Unless they're a runner, and that's great. Maybe their goal is running, right? But when their when their strategy is not meeting their goal uh usually it's because they're not expanding on uh on their method right and again from my story i've experienced it all right so um humility is one of the key mindsets to expanding in fitness and you know a lot of times if you don't know uh you know go out go and find it and see see a different view right and you know I learned a lot of the bodybuilding methods uh, in the beginning. It, it's because I went and I read books about bodybuilding and so on, so on. I experimented with that. But this is the problem with uh, seeking out just reading material sometimes. Because when we seek out reading material, we seek out uh, material based on a bias. So when I was looking at bodybuilding, I wasn't looking at um, you know methods for high performance, right? And, um, and yeah, so I kept learning new bodybuilding methods, right? So, so when we seek out a bias, we are just, ex- ex- we're just looking at what we want to look at, right? And it wasn't until I actually went out to seal fit and, uh, I was, it was forced upon me to actually look outside the box, right? And, um, and looking outside the box, uh, really showed me that there was more to it. Than just uh, methods for bodybuilding, right? So we tend to seek uh, information uh, based on a bias of what we want, which is not a bad thing. Um, but it's always good to look outside the box, and we always look to refine, uh, you know, like data or or seek data that verifies what we already know, right? It's funny because I was going through. I have stacks of magazines. When I first started bodybuilding, I started buy, buying bodybuilding magazines, and I was reading through one. And it was talking about um, pretty much keto, and keto before was not a big thing. Now, now, ketogenic diet is all over the place. So, uh, but it's not new, right? If you look at it, it's been around for ages. Um, they used it medically for epilepsy and stuff of like that. Um, for you know, uh, high, for for uh, because ketones in the brain is actually uh, the brain actually likes to use ketones and it's more effective, and. Um, and yeah, so anyways, uh, I was looking through these magazines and they were talking about um, con- f- higher, higher fat consumption and the effectiveness of it. And I've had this magazine for a long time. It's an old, it's an old one, like when I first started, uh, you know, training for bodybuilding. And I complete, I mis- completely missed it. I probably read it and I disagreed with it, right? Because it didn't validate um, uh, what I wanted it to validate. And that's another issue is once you once you have that ego and you don't have the humility to actually say, hey, you know, possibly, maybe, right? Maybe I maybe what I don't know isn't isn't correct, right? So I so I'm sure I read it when I first bought the magazine. I probably just skipped it over, right? So there's a there's there's that issue that when you're actually looking to just read the information, and I'm not saying I still read information and seek data that way, but I have a different mindset about it now. Right, I I read everything with an open mind, right, and because I'm always looking to expand, right, and uh, I I could be wrong, right. So I've taken myself out of the equation. I'm more looked at. Look, I'm looking at things more as a scientist who is doesn't have a bias but looking for a result, right. And that's and that's so important, right. So, and it took me to to get out um, and uh, have a mentor. You know, uh, so I was out there for three weeks out in California there, um, you know, uh, working with people that were way 
far beyond uh, where I, where I was, you know, or am, you know, and uh, and they coached me, and they taught me a different way, right? Showing me something brand new, and it worked, and it was highly effective, right? So I came back and I started expanding it. I would I never would have, right? So we need to uh, sometimes reach further than uh, than our friends and you know uh, a magazine article that verifies you know our data right so so yeah so uh, seek out new new information right so anyways this is a long ramble it was 13 minutes now it's 20 <laughs> so anyways uh, mindset of fitness and uh, you know um, um, the book is almost done this is second draft I'm gonna go through it again because I've just ex- I've just been in here expanding and uh, I gotta go back and you know my grammar is terrible <laughs> so I gotta go back and really uh, dig in with the grammar aspect and uh, get it done so uh, yeah so that's the section of my book all right uh, thanks for watching guys all right see